so the three keyboards that we have in front of us today all cost between 100 to 110 dollars they are all mechanical and not optical and we have the fanatic streak 65 the hyperx ally origin 60 and then we also have the corsair k65 mini just today we're going to be figuring out which one of these keyboards is going to be the absolute best value for the money getting right into it we have some form factor differences between the three so we have the uh, fanatic street 65 right here this one is going to be more of a low profile keyboard case with a largely plastic build it doesn't necessarily feel cheap but it doesn't feel exactly premium either but it is a unique case design so we got these low profile abs keycaps will shine through as well that also you know do shine and you know keep like your finger oils and the keys and whatnot so that is moderately annoying i wish that it didn't but the rgb is very good and the switches are not bad either they're low profile kale switches as well and we'll get into that a little bit later a couple notable features about this so this little fanatic badge at the back is actually magnetic and removable i don't really know um why that really matters but it is the usb port is on the left side of the keyboard even though it is low profile it does have one level of kickstand support so that's really nice the kickstands aren't perfect though because if you rock your keyboard to the left or right a little bit they are liable to close but um you know if you keep your keyboard planted and you don't really move it around a lot it shouldn't really be a big deal for you this is a 65 percent keyboard as well so it is slightly larger than the other two that i have on my desk but all of the uh shortcuts and stuff like that are printed on the front of the keycaps as well so you don't really have to worry about uh, looking for manuals and stuff like that to use the different shortcuts it is very easy to use and you do have those dedicated arrow keys talking about the switches that this keyboard uses they are from kale and they do actuate at one millimeter with a total travel distance of 3.2 millimeters they're supposed to be like a silent switch but they don't really feel dampened it's very similar to a kale box switch and uh, as far as the stabilizers go the stabilizers on this board are pretty lubed and they are pretty decent as well nothing that i would say is like super special but i will say that the stabilizers on this keyboard are better than the stabilizers on the other two in this video today in terms of the rgb lighting effects i do think that the lighting effects are pretty nice on the fanatic street 65 i wouldn't say that they are exactly uh, anything uh, special but i do think that they look pretty good and they are relatively bright nothing that's really uh, gonna blow your mind but I do think that the uh, the RGB is nothing less than suitable. And for a gaming keyboard, the user experience with this one is very nice, especially if you're looking for a low profile keyboard, you wanna use something that's gonna be a little bit different than what you've used before with your standard profile or taller profile keyboards. This might be a nice change of pace for you. Biggest cons with this keyboard though, I'll definitely say is gonna be the fact that the keycaps are not really that great. And there aren't really many low profile aftermarket options that are PBT that won't shine if you don't mind the shine on the keycaps i do think that for 110 dollars this one is a pretty good contender decently fast decent build quality i would say it's very middle of the road but i wouldn't call it uh, anything amazing now we have the hyperx alloy origin 60 this one came out i believe last month in february and this one is going to be the most premium out of the bunch so this one instead of giving you a plastic case like the other two you're actually going to get an aluminum case that also has two levels of kickstand height adjustability so that's really cool as well because you do get to enjoy a little bit more comfortable typing angle if flat doesn't really work well for you and the uh, rgb effects and whatnot are pretty decent as well so let me see we got brightness there different rgb modes here but um, otherwise the hyperx alloy origin 60 i'm gonna say clearly is the most well built and I also feel like the switches are the best as well. These are HyperX's red linear switches and they actuate at 1.8 millimeters and they have a total travel distance of 3.8 millimeters. And honestly, I feel like they sound the best and feel the best as well as far as being the most smooth compared to the Cherry switches that we'll talk about on the Corsair K65 Mini. But otherwise, um, I feel like these are definitely considerably better than what you'll find on most keyboards. They're very similar to something that you would find like in the aftermarket. Honestly, I would love if HyperX sold these switches and these actually do um, I'm not gonna say that between the three that you're gonna notice a massive difference in your gameplay but this is going to give you the most pleasant experience between the three you also get this little hyperx topography keycap but well, not keycap but the space bar in the box as well and i think it looks very good it is painted abs so it's nothing special but the keycaps indeed are double shot pbt and i do think that the keycaps and the switch combination as long as the metal plate do sound pretty good as well the stabilizers on the other hand i will say that this board probably has the worst stabilizers but you know if you really want to you know go all out and 
modify this keyboard and desolder and take it apart and all that stuff, you can. Or you can just, you know, inject some extra Crytux into the stabilizer, and I believe that that will solve most of the issue. But um, that is indeed something that I noticed, and I hope that HyperX will change their manufacturing a little bit to help out with uh, making sure that these stabilizers are improved in the future. And if that's done, that would make this clearly the best, but uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit here. And then next we have the Corsair K65 Mini. This is Corsair's first attempt at a 60% keyboard. And this one is gonna be very, very similar to uh, a GK61 that I've tried in the past in terms of the case. It's largely the same as, you know, GK61 and Pro 2, things like that. Plastic, generic Chinese case, nothing really too crazy. This one does feature a white back plate though for the aluminum plate and so the rgb does shine a little bit better than the other two because they have you know just either the black aluminum in the case of the hyper x and just the black plastic in the case of the fanatic but you do have your standard profile keycaps here same as the hyper x Corsair Legends, I do think, look the best between the three. I think that these look the most and the least gamery. But um, in terms of like the shortcuts of things, I feel like the shortcuts for the arrow keys are going to be its biggest downfall for me. Where on the other two, the Fnatic Street 65 has dedicated arrow keys and the Hyper X has it over here. Where you have the function key all the way to the right side and you have your arrow keys right here in this region. Whereas with a Corsair, you have to press function here and reach over all the way over here, it's, it's not very uh, ergonomic, I'll say, to reach the arrow keys on this keyboard. Especially in direct comparison, like this just feels really natural, and this uh, is not. I don't I, I don't even know how I'd even use that and get used to it. Similar to the HyperX, you do also get this really nice space bar as well. Between both of them, you have three individual RGBs in the space bar itself as well. So this accent keycap, or uh, space bar keycap, I should say, is very well illuminated. In terms of like your different lighting modes and whatnot, you do have quite a few of them stored on the board storage if you care about the uh, lighting effects but when we get into the downsides of this keyboard largely the biggest downside is going to be the fact that it comes with cherry switches so you can either get cherry mx reds or cherry mx silvers which um you know they're the industry standard switch but cherry switches are just not very good and in direct comparison to the hyperx switches and the fanatic switches they uh they feel horrible they feel horrible. So with that being said, you know, does it impact your gaming experience having cherry switches? Not necessarily, but a novel thing about this keyboard is that the PCB will also go up to 8,000 Hertz polling rate, which is supposed to basically give your keyboard like a little bit of a speed boost in terms of responsiveness. And I feel like it's kind of irrelevant by having that basically out of date technology. Corsair, they do have new optical switches as well available, but they aren't available on this keyboard. They're currently, to my knowledge, only on the K100, which the K100 is a nice keyboard, but it's not a hundred dollars and it doesn't fit into this form factor comparison as well. So with all those things being said, I feel like the Hyper X stands out as definitely the best deal as I believe this keyboard is either 99 or 109. The Corsair for sure is 109. The Fnatic Street 65 for sure is 109 as well. And I'm pretty sure that all three of these at some point will experience a sale where maybe it'll even be less than $100. So with all three of these keyboards being around that $100 price point, I wanna talk about a couple more as well. So we have the Ducky 1-2 Mini, which which I feel like suffers from a lot of the same uh, issues as the Corsair keyboard, but the Ducky is a lot better than the Corsair as well because the Ducky, it does feel a bit more premium, even though it is a fully plastic keyboard, you know, when you use the Ducky, it does feel like a little bit better experience. The switch feel is the same because they're largely cherry switches, but they now do have some Kale and Gateron options. So I feel like the Ducky is not a bad choice. Now the Razer Huntsman Mini, on the other hand, I don't have one because I gave one away to a subscriber a while ago, but uh, the only Razer Huntsman Mini that I feel like is worth getting is gonna be the optical red switches. So the optical red switches, are decent. The stabilizers kind of suck on that one too. And that's kind of a common theme with all of those keyboards, except for maybe the exception of the Ducky and the exception of the Fnatic Street 65 having decent stabilizers. But um, the HyperX and the Corsair stabilizers are not really that great. And the Razer stabilizers are absolutely horrible too. So just go ahead and forget about that. In terms of the ergonomics between the three, I would have to put the Corsair at the bottom of the list. Then I will put the HyperX at the top, having that dual level kickstand. And then I'll put the Fnatic right in the middle having the single level of adjustable height so that's pretty nice as well i'm glad that these two options definitely have that i do feel like the corsair is missing that but maybe if it had a unique case between the three of these the keyboard that gives me the absolute
absolute best experience in terms of you know feeling premium feeling like the money that you spent is well worth it this one is the most solid the most rigid i have to give it to the hyper x followed by the Fanatics 365 being a 100% utilitarian and just very, very useful. Um, I don't really feel like they really skimped out on any features of this keyboard. Like it just seems like a nice fully featured keyboard where everything was paid attention to with the exception of the keycaps. So I would give the second place spot to the, uh, the Fnatic Street 65. And then we go over to the Corsair. It feels like this keyboard was just kind of a big miss. So, um, you know, I would have to put this one in dead last. Now, when we factor in the Ducky 1-2 Mini and the Razer uh, Huntsman Mini, I would have to say still Origins Alloy 60 at the top. Then I will put the Ducky 1-2 Mini in the second place spot, depending on the switches that it had. If it had Kale switches or Gateron switches, I will put it easily in that second place spot. And then the uh, uh, Fnatic Street 65, I would put in the third place spot and then the Razer Huntsman Mini fourth place and the Corsair K65 Mini in fifth place. But that is going to be my rankings for which keyboards I feel like are the best deal for around that $100 to $110 price point. I feel like that's a, a really important market and especially, you know, with everybody really liking the 60 to 65% form factor. Out of the bunch, the Fnatic Street 65, you know, gives you that nice, uh, you know, difference in the layout. But um, I do feel like these are probably the best options in that price range. Really, anything lower than about a hundred bucks, I'm really looking at maybe like either a Keychron K6, which also happens to be wireless, or I'm looking at a GK61, which is going to be around that uh, 60 to 70 ish, maybe eighty dollar price point, which you can get with either regular switches or even optical switches. That's pretty much where I stand on everything. I do like uh, all these boards in some capacity, but um, you know, going from the top to the bottom of the list, they all have their strengths and weaknesses. And honestly speaking, I do think that the uh, Origin 60 is the best. And then uh, you know, the Razer is decent too. The Fnatic is really good as well. And I feel like those are really the standout boards that you should really be considering. If you want the fastest board between the bunch, you go with the Razer. If you want the nicest board between the bunch, you go with the HyperX. But well, that's gonna be it for this video. If you guys enjoy, feel free to drop a like. Subscribe if you guys are new. I will catch you in the next video. But of course, if you don't wanna miss any other content, make sure to hit that bell on your way out. I'll see you guys in the next one.